So the 1976 King Kong is probably the strangest version of the three Kong movies. Produced by Dino De Laurentiis and directed by John Gillerman, King Kong 1976 approaches the original story from a different angle. Instead of going for an adventurous, action-packed thriller type movie with tons of exciting set pieces, the 70s Kong is more interested in telling a slower and more deliberate story. Instead of holding the original on a pedestal, Kong 76 deconstructs the original, commenting on some of Cooper and Shodzak's narrative missteps. More focus is placed on the tragedy of Kong's death, for instance, and the imperialist undertones that were present in the original are more directly addressed and condemned here. Jeff Bridges' character, Jack Prescott, even blatantly calls out this film's equivalent of Carl Denham for capturing Kong, stating that they took away the native's god. In the original, the Carl Denham character was portrayed as noble and arguably the protagonist. The audience was meant to feel bad for King Kong when he died, sure, but Carl was by no means villainized or even held responsible for the death of Kong or his role as an imperialist agent. This movie flips that on its head, making Fred Wilson, who is this movie's stand-in for Carl, the closest thing we have to a villain. Well, unless you count society or the Western world as this film's antagonist, which, sure, but Fred Wilson, an oil exec, is the vehicle that the film uses to communicate these concepts. Anyways, one of the big problems people have with this movie is rooted in how successful and well-made the original King Kong was. This movie doesn't have any dinosaurs, exciting set pieces, or really that much action, for instance. It's a lot more cynical and serious than the original, and just doesn't capture the adventurous magic of the 33 version. For all intents and purposes, it's a lot more boring. For me, I personally don't mind the slower pace of this movie though, nor the more cynical attitude it has. Like, yeah, I get that it isn't really that faithful to how the original approached this concept, but I do admire that it tried something different and actually attempted to convey a different message. After all, if you're going to remake a movie, I find that the most successful way to do so is by trying something different and bringing your own voice to the project. Classic remakes such as The Thing and The Fly are so successful because they weren't afraid to try something new, for instance, even if their approaches were unfaithful to what they were retelling. Their league's better than something like Beauty and the Beast or the Lion King remakes, which are faithful, sure, but don't really add anything or give you something new. With that said, is the 1976 King Kong good? Well, no. Even though it tries something different, it still ultimately fails. The movie's emotional core is really contingent on our feelings towards Kong. After all, if we don't care about him, his death and the emotional and thematic weight it carries just falls flat. And unfortunately, this King Kong just really isn't likable. Like, it was weird when the 1933 Kong started getting handsy with his captive lady friend, but here, holy fuck do they take it to a new level. Even after Dwan strangely excuses his weirdly rapey behavior, she still clearly does not want to be captured by him, and she keeps trying to get away even though he keeps trying to get her. Like, movie, how do you want me to feel about Kong? Is he a victim? Is he a villain? Is he a metaphor? Is he a creep? You might be tempted to say he's just an animal and it's ridiculous to hold him to the same standards of consent that people adhere to, but like, if he's just supposed to be an animal, why did they make him smitten with a human woman, and why did they portray the relationship as so one-sided? I mean, Shape of Water tells a Beauty and the Beast story, and the creature there isn't creepy and unlikable. Like, it would actually be sad if he died. For what this movie was going for emotionally and thematically though, it was just a bad choice to frame the story in this way and make him a creep. Like, for fuck's sake, if you want me to feel bad for King Kong, which it really seems like you were going for, then maybe drop the whole rapey angle. Anyways, this isn't the only problem this film has. While the original was definitely more adventurous and lighthearted, it was also a lot more deliberate in its artistic choices. Everything that was in the movie was there for a reason and used to its fullest potential. There were several small details and motifs that helped reinforce the theme, and the theme was clear and unmistakable. Everything existed in service to the film's message, and each component effectively complemented it. In the 1976 King Kong, the message is a little all over the place. Like, it wants to have an environmentalist message while also being about vanity and the evils of showbiz, and it's still not entirely divorced from the whole beauty killed the beast thing, and yeah, it's a mess. I also get the feeling that this movie is much cheesier than the filmmakers intended it to be. It drops the exciting dinosaur set pieces and adopts a slower pace in a more serious and mature tone, but there are several instances of laugh-out-loud cheesiness. This doesn't do the weak atmosphere any favors, and makes the overall movie feel less cohesive. The movie is also surprisingly a lot more dated than the 1933 version on a technical level. It looks a lot cheaper, it's less atmospheric, and the cinematography is much more bland. The acting isn't great, and aside from the decent costume design for Kong, there's really nothing aesthetically that makes this film stand out. The editing is fine, the music is decent, and the acting ranges from bad to okay. 
Overall, King Kong 1976 is both a shell of the 1933 original and a failure as a standalone experience. The story is messy, unfocused, and ineffective, and the actual filmmaking is either bland, uninteresting, mediocre, or wildly clashes with the story and intended tone. So with that, I give King Kong 1976 a 3 out of 10. Watch it if you're curious, but if you're expecting anything great or exciting, there are better movies to spend your time with. Anyways, what did you think of the 1976 King Kong? Let me know your thoughts down in the comments. And thanks for watching! If you liked this video and want more from the Cynical Storyteller, consider subscribing and following my blog. The link is in the description.